Hey friendos, my name is Nez and welcome back to uh, Monster Prom in 2021. It's more likely than you think. We're back at Spooky High, friendos, because in our time playing the sequel Monster Camp, I've realized that we've actually missed out on so many awesome fan-made mods from the first game. We honestly don't get that much new story content in Monster Camp anymore, so I was thinking, hey, let's go back to the first game and see all of the awesome mods that we've missed. Anyway though, today we'll be playing the mod Bellfigure the Tooth Fairy by Steam user Utau. Let's play! You're about to start a game with these mods enabled. Sure. And... Mod Focus. One player. Second term. Short game. Ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. We kinda still are. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid. But always willing to live life to the fullest. We are on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Who are you? Ah yes, the original playable characters. Let's play as... Who has the biggest shit-eating grin? Let's go with... Blue. Sweet. And we have yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the Monster Prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our eight most charismatic classmates. Scott Howell, 21. <laughs> a werewolf athlete, he compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Molly Guys, 22 question mark. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Damien LeVay, 21. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Liam the Lion Court, for we have no idea. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid the fact that he was a truly lovable nerd. A dork, if you will. Zoe, who has lived forever. An eldritch cutie who went from endless date with the Dark Realms to ultimate fangirl. Calculester, Hewlett Packard 1.0. A library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. And Vero Berlin 23. A mean self-made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and afraid and we were ready to start. I remember this. Ah yes, Teen Wolf Magazine! Welcome to Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever! All minds are rotten and they are rotten in so many different ways. We're no more, we're using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant Sega you are. Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever, TM will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start! Democracy is just broken, what would be the best way of choosing the leaders of modern society? I say... Whoever can play the most heartbreaking violin solo wins. Very creative. If you were the leader of a new country, what would your flag look like? Just Garfield's face, yeah, it's a power move. There's no doubt you're the supreme leader of your land if no one stops you from making Garfield the flag of your country. If you were a D&D character, what would be your class? Fanfic Bard. Party Smith. Uh, money Maker, Prettiest One, Automaton. Let's go with Fanfic Bard. And what would be the most appealing in a love partner? Hmm. A very cindere personality. And now we're back to Spooky High, friendos. I feel like we just repeated a year. Let's go. Or we got held back. Anyway, though. Let's go to the shop. Hello there, shopkeep. We have our mod item. A tiny box for teeth. Not that you need one to collect them, but it's nice to have one regardless, am I right? But this box feels a little odd, though. Hmm. And now we have the ability to find... The mod character. The new character. They seem to not have showed up for lunch! They're skipping lunch! You need to eat your lunch for a proper and healthy day! Let's just say hi to his shopkeep again and then we'll run back out. Week 1, evening! 
Now, where should we go? First of all, what are our skills? Hmm. I say we need to raise our creativity. That day while rehearsing for the class plays as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a figurative blowjob. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain to creativity. After buying the odd looking box for teeth, you'll look at it for a while now. Slowly spacing out, he then notice someone walking up to you until he taps you on your shoulder. Hey there, Nez. What you doing here in the auditorium? You wonder who the hell this guy might be. You've literally never seen him in your entire life before. Also, he seems to be eyeing your box for teeth somehow. So, not that I care about you at all, but I notice you've got one of my boxes. Normally, I'd just take them back, but I'm not interested in an empty box. So, after stealing my box from me, you definitely owe me a full box with teeth, don't you think? Hello, hello! Who is this chat? And are they... are they a bat? I think they're a bat. What? You try to explain that you didn't steal the box, but that bat boy seems to not be interested in what you have to say at all. Look, I really couldn't care less about why you have it. Bring it back with teeth in it or face the consequences. Oh, are these painful consequences or sexy consequences? Bye, loser. And I guarantee you won't like consequences at all. Trust me. I don't know. Maybe I'm into that sort of thing. Having said that, that bat disappears, leaving you with only absolute cluelessness about his name. But also with a mission. Where the heck are you gonna find these teeth? Well, today seems to be your lucky day, as you encounter just as a monster, you can definitely ask about how to get a lot of teeth. Sup, Nez? Thank God or whoever sent Damien. You tell him about your odd encounter and strange quest, Damien rolls his eyes though. Ugh, uh, that dude again? Seen him once in the library before, and man, that guy's batshit crazy, am I right? So, now you're stuck with him. Remind me to stay away from you! Oh, ouch! That hurt! Well, I really hope you didn't want to date Damien, still that doesn't help you with the request for the teeth. Teeth? Well sure, I can punch out a lot of them, but I usually use them in crafts classes to make rad sculptures out of them, sorry. Still, if you're really desperate for teeth, I might have an option for you. But first you gotta prove you're rad enough by licking the seat of the school toilet! Ah! That would not only prove that you're badass, but also give you at least herpes! There has to be another way to prove that you're worthy! Hmm. Licking toilet seats? That's for beginners. Only really bold people would dare to sit on the toilet without putting paper underneath! Or... But wouldn't it be more badass to not lick them? I mean, technically I'm cleaning them if I lick them so other people won't be harmed. And isn't being really badass all about not being nice to other people? Actually, we have a point. Whoa, that's crazy. What? I've never thought about that before, but you're right! Then how about we're so badass we can make it even more filthy? You didn't know Damien was carrying so much trash around him, but well, who are you to question this? You two have the greatest time wrecking and trashing all the school toilets. You gain two boldness and hey, you even find a tooth in the sink. Rad! That's gross. That is very gross. Okay. So, let's just visit Shopkeep. Then, we'll skip this event. Aha! Week 2, noon! Oh, who could that be? Sitting all alone. As you look around for a seat, you see Morpheus quietly enjoying his lunch. The perfect moment to sit with him. Morpheus is not so thrilled having you there, but he's also way too polite to ask you to leave. So the two of you spend most of your lunch break in the silence. Morpheus, a second character in this mod? When Morpheus leaves for a while to go to the toilet, you notice he left his two bags of sand on the table. Neat, you always wanted to know what was inside of them. You know, sand. What do we do? Throw sand from the left bag into the air. Throw sand from the right bag into the air. I guess we're doing a coin flip. Why can't we throw both? Well, here goes nothing. You go for the right bag and grab a handful of sand and throw it into the air. Here goes nothing. You scream slinging it into the air. As soon as the sand rains down on everyone, almost the whole cafeteria drops down in an instant. Only loud snoring noises can be heard as everybody's now asleep. 
I thought we killed him. What have you done? The whole cafeteria grunts and turns into the most horrific nightmares. Morpheus raises his eyebrow when he comes back before giving you a quite annoyed look. Can't I ever leave them just for a second? Jesus! He takes the other bag and brings everyone peaceful and nice dreams except for you before he leaves. Luckily, today is the first time you actually managed to dream lucid. You straightly punch the monsters pestering you into the face, turning your nightmares into a good dream for you. When you wake up, your face is full of the food from your tray. Luckily, you then suffocate in your sleep. But apart from the miracle of life, you also get four boldness for everything you did in your dreams. Fancy! There's also a Sandman in this mod. Okay, where do we go? I say we go back to the auditorium. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you're struck by the lightning of inspiration. You come up with the ultimate nickname for yourself. You tell everyone to call you by it, also known as one of the seven most douchebaggish moves in the world. But the nickname is so awesome, inventive, and appropriate that people decide to go with it. Quite the feat, you gain zoo creativity. We the devs dare you to actually come up with a nickname for yourselves and ask the other players to call you by that name until the end of this run. I say we call ourselves Biggest Dickus. And lo and behold, you think about another way to get even more teeth spacing out. Reality hits you all of a sudden when you run into two of your classmates. What the? Biggest dickest can't you watch out where the hell you're going? How rude. Disturbing a sophisticated conversation of the intellectual upper class of the school by running into them. Couldn't you at least do something less mainstream? Whoops, well anyways, now that you face the two of them, you notice that it wouldn't hurt to ask uh, the intellectual upper class about how to get more teeth. Oh, you're talking about Bell. He's a bit fixated on teeth, but I don't really mind. He sometimes trade. Teeth of the people I hold hostage in my cellar for money. I think he's alright. I don't share your opinion. He once tried to pull out my teeth. You hold yourself back from mentioning that they both are some kind of family, maybe. You're both vampires, bat things. That vampire with only one tooth would probably be very anti-mainstream. So you're looking for teeth? Well, maybe Liam gives you one of his. I'm out. What? No! Never! I'm out! You seriously have never seen Liam run that fast. Sheesh, that was a joke. Oh, well, whatever. I mean, I have some teeth left, maybe. Depends on the price you're willing to pay. Um, well, I mean, I could just pay you the money for them, right? No, we have no money. Looks at Vera with sparkling anime eyes, but Vera, it's life or death for me. Who will admire you to death once Belle killed me? <laughs> um, well, yeah. I mean, not that I would mind, but it's hard to find slaves who volunteer to do anything you want for free, so... Having you killed would actually cost me money. Oh, it's quite unusual seeing Vera blush, but you don't mind that. She silently hands you some teeth before leaving quickly. Ah oh, well, you would have liked to look at her for some more time, but it's fine. At least you get some more teeth, you add them to your box which is already half full, and oh, Vera's also handed you two charms. Sweet. Very sweet. Hmm, but it seems Bella's nowhere. Where could he be? Okay, where should we go? Let's go to... Uh, hmm. We have a few equal... We have a few equal skills. I think we should just try to balance it out. Let's go with the gym. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit. Leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain two charm. You wander around the school feeling quite successful as your box of teeth is almost full. Still, there's some more room for a few teeth, if you want to bring it up to perfection. Well, of course you do! That is why you don't mind two of your classmates coming to you. You have absolutely no clue what they want, but you're gonna find out a way to get some teeth out of it. Hey, Nez, what's up? We definitely just wanted to come over and ask you about your well-being, not suddenly squeeze you out about this cute bat boy. Miri, seriously. What, did he ask that Biggest Dickus knows him and we can sneakily question him about it? And what exactly do you think meant sneaky and subtle? Um, not telling you my questions all across the hall? No, Miri, that means we ask questions about Bell without him noticing that we actually want to ask questions about Bell. Oh, that makes so much sense. 
but that would mean that I completely failed our mission. How embarrassing. You look between them and can actually taste attention. Well, it kinda hurts that they're more interested in the teeth-loving bat guy than in you, but oh well. You might have just figured out a perfect plan to utilize this awkward situation. And so you wait for another moment for the awkwardness to sink in before you open your mouth. Hmm. You know, Belle and I are like best buddies for life, yes! So I know how I could hook one of you up with him. But unfortunately, I need a lot of teeth to perform the Tooth Fairy Hookup Ritual. Or... Well, all we know right now is that he's into collecting teeth donations for the poor toothless Night Furies out there. So in case one of you wants to get into saving the species, I've got a donation box right here. Actually, no, I want to hear all about the Tooth Fairy Hookup Ritual. Yes! Sweet! Count me in! Where do I have to drop all these teeth? Wait, I do have a lot of teeth too! I want to be the one hooked up! As long as that doesn't mean that an actual hook will be included! Here, take mine! Whenever I go partying, I wake up with a lot of teeth under my pillow. No clue where or who they came from, but fuck that, right? Pathetic! I only got the finest teeth of people trying to assassinate the royal family to free the kingdom! Part 12 of their necessary tortures until they face the sweet release of death is to pull out their teeth. Both girls hand over their teeth and you count them. In the end, they both have an equal pile of teeth in front of them. You shrug, telling them that only one with the most teeth can fulfill the ritual needed, in that it wouldn't work with an equal amount of teeth. <sighs> Dang, I need to go. Need to start a few more bar fights to get more teeth. And I gotta go grab my serfs and tell them to pull out each other's teeth. In the end, it's for a greater good. Both of them disappear and leave you behind with goosebumps all over you. Jeez, luckily they didn't just rip your teeth out. You happily get all these teeth inside a box and making it nice and full, neato! For your talent in talking to women, you award yourself for a whopping three charm too! What a successful day! Aha! We should have all the teeth now, right? I guess we do. Hmm. And hello, hello, Belle! I see you in the cafeteria! You see your favorite tooth fairy sitting alone at the table at the cafeteria. Great! You walk over and almost slam down your tray on the table, causing him to look up at you. You know, you could have just sat there like any normal person, right? Yes, you could have, but there's definitely not enough drama in here, so we had to make a scene. Whatever. I'm currently thinking about a way to ace arts and crafts without actually crafting anything. I'm just not creative enough to come up with anything. Probably this is why I'm that bad in the first place. So, uh, why don't you just hand in a blank paper and tell the teacher it's a white tooth in a blizzard? Or you just need a tooth large enough to really impress the teacher, how about the tooth of a mammoth for example? I want to go with the artsy one! Perfect! That's the best idea I've heard all day! Sheesh! You really saved my life here, and my record card. Thanks, Ziggis Bickus. You really are proud to hear that he actually made it! Indeed, the teacher was so impressed that he actually called the Louvre to have it exhibited there! The title of this masterpiece is Ice Cold Tea. It becomes a hit, especially amongst struggling students! As a thank you, Belle gives you the original painting after the exhibition is over. You're actually able to sell it for a really good price on eBay! Sweet! You gain 10 money! Money! And time for the final week! Week 3, evening! Let's go to the auditorium! That day while rehearsing for the class play, you do a terrific job at acting! You act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you! Seven roses to be exact. Damn, roses aren't actually a valid currency or stat in this game! Anyway though, you check your converter app to see if this could translate into something a bit more useful. Huh, it seems seven roses equals two creativity points! Sweet, you gain two creativity! And finally, the time has come for Belle and you to meet again. You feel pretty confident about this. Overall, your box is filled to the brim with teeth. So you are definitely ready for him to come and see how awesome you are. Hey, Dickus Dickus, time's up. So, I hope you got those teeth ready. Not bad. Hell yeah, that's what I call a full box. You're not as lame as I thought you'd be. Actually, you might even be quite cool. Yes. Finally! Oh, the joy over the approval of one of your classmates is overflowing through you making all of the work you've done worthwhile. You know me, we can hang out if you want. Like, now. D 
Double yes! Screw prom! The Tooth Fairy himself wants to hang out with you, so... What are you waiting for? You and Belle have a blast and while hanging out you notice that you actually have a lot in common. The best thing is that Belle seems to think so too, but he still looks like he's got something bothering him. So you gather all of your courage and try to ask him about it. Huh. Well, hey, you know that you could always... You know that you could always talk to me, right? About whatever may be bothering you, because you're the teeth to my grin. Or... It's scientifically proven that keeping stuff that bothers you for yourself is actually unhealthy. So if you don't want to get sick, you better let me know what's going on. I say we go with unprotected handholding. Bell turns a bright red and looks aside. Surprisingly, he doesn't pull away his hands though. Uh... You, serious? Well, um, that thing, the thing is that I think I quite like you and I'm just a little scared that you only like one half of me. You shake your head, reassuring him that that for sure isn't true. Bell actually seems to believe you. Alright, um, meet me at prom in the park, okay? I'll show you what I'm talking about. Bell disappears, leaving you with even more question marks. But he said he'll show you, so that for sure has to be a good thing, right? And he said something about prom! We're going to prom! With a Bat Boy! Bat Boy, here we come! The night for prom has come. Your heart is beating faster as you nervously wait for Belle to show up. He doesn't. At least he don't think so. You feel kind of heartbroken, as you thought that he might have had some sincere feelings for you. Or did you just imagine that? But just as you were about to leave, you hear someone calling you. You turn around and freeze. Right in front of you hovers the cutest little baby bat imaginable. He carries a rose in his tiny feet and looks kind of scared. Oh, he's a little adorable bat baby! It's me! The bat mumbles. You need a moment to realize that this indeed is Belle, just as a bat. I can turn into a bat, but I kinda hate it. Most people only like me as a bat or laugh at me as soon as they find out. I just look so ridiculous. He sighs. You quickly shake your head and hug the bat close. That is the most adorable thing you've ever seen! Belle is obviously very relieved that you did laugh and both of you go to prom together. After prom, the two of you actually become a couple and that's the best thing ever. Who wouldn't want a boyfriend that could be both hot and kawaii? Hey! We have a bad boyfriend now! And he's so adorable, he's so floofy! Very poggers. And those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the Moss Prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always, does life happen, and it was wonderful. Liam honed his most admirable skill and got a job with it. He now designs Momogram filters. Galculesser went to the Robo University and majored in mecha robotics. He's now 250 feet tall and fights against weird giant creatures protecting Tokyo 3. Zoe dedicated the next several years writing her most ambitious fanfic ever. It focused on the struggles of Shaggy containing and controlling his limitless power. It delved into the psychological nuances of the Mystery Gang while also including crossovers with Akira, Flubber, and the unbearable lightness of being. It's said to mix Tolstoy's mastery of prose and the juiciness of a very juicy Big Mac. It ended up entering Western literary canon. And for those three weeks, the Monster Prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in this war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. I'm
There we go, friendos! Belfigur the Tooth Fairy mod by Utau! If you friendos enjoyed this episode of Monster Prom, leave your comments down below, like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to always stay up to date for our videos. Also consider becoming our patron and YouTube member to help support our channel. Until our next episode of Monster Prom, my name is Nez and thanks for watching! See you all next time! Bye friendos!